So you may have heard by now that Ryzen needs good memory speeds in order to perform better, but by just how much does it perform better with higher speed memory? And also, in the current pricing of the DDR4 market, is it worth it to get that higher speed memory? Let's find out. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. This is Brian coming to you guys today with a video on DDR4 memory and Ryzen CPUs. Now, a lot of other people have tested memory speeds on Ryzen and shown that it does indeed make a performance difference. But also today, I'm going to be testing different speeds, but as well within those speeds, test different timings to see how it performs in games. However, before we get on with the benchmarks, we have to talk about the specs and the speeds that we're testing at. First of all, we're using the Ryzen 3 1200, which is the slowest variant up in the Ryzen lineup of CPUs. Now, the reason I'm using this CPU is it's going to be the most sensitive to memory speed performance upgrades if you indeed use that in video games. Also, we're using a GTX 1080 with 1080p on low settings, so we don't want any graphics card bottlenecks affecting performance to see these differences. Now with that said, we overclocked the Ryzen 3 CPU to 4 GHz and we're also testing three different speeds on Crucial's ballistic memory, which I find the XMP profiles work perfectly at 3200 MHz. However, the other speeds that we're testing at is also 2666 MHz and 2133 MHz. However, within those 2666 MHz speeds, I'm also lowering the timings as tight as possible to see if that makes a difference versus the speeds themselves. So the first benchmark we're looking at here is Far Cry Primal and 1080p low settings, 117 FPS at 3200 MHz. Contrast that to 2066 with low timings, we scored 114 FPS. And then 2666 with a little bit looser timings, scored 113 FPS. And then of course, default memory speeds at 2133 MHz, scored 106 FPS. So what we saw here, going from 2133 to 2666 made quite a big difference. However, 2666 low timings and even loose timings scored only 3% lower than 3200 MHz. When it comes to CSGO, one of the most popular multiplayer titles, we're using a community-made benchmark map, so the results will be very consistent. And what we saw here with 3200 MHz is around 329 average FPS. When we go to 2666, tight timings, we had 295 average FPS. And then loose timings yet again scored 295 average FPS. However, 2133 was well below the ball here, scoring 273 FPS. So there was quite a big difference, 20% between the lowest memory speeds and 3200 MHz. However, 2666, even the tight timings, was quite a bit behind by about 11%. Next up we have Dota 2, which will incorporate a little bit of variance, however I do try to weed this out as much as possible by going Storm Spirit mid every time in a bot match. And what we saw here was that 2666 was only 2% behind, 183 frames per second versus 187 on 3200 MHz. Even the loose timings on 2666 got 182 average FPS. And then 2133 MHz scored abysmally low with a 12% difference at 168 average FPS versus the 3200 MHz at 187 FPS. Then moving on to Tom Clancy's The Division. Very accurate benchmark. I find it spits out the same numbers almost every single time you benchmark this. 3200 MHz, 186 FPS. Then going to 2666 tight timings, 185. Then 2666 with loose timings, 183. Then of course 2133 MHz scored in quite substantially lower at 174 FPS. So on this particular game, the big difference here was 2133 was falling behind by quite a lot. Then of course the last game I wanted to test for you guys was Players Unknown's Battlegrounds or PUBG. Now I go into the ruin section of the map every time I benchmark because I get consistent results. Generally people aren't there as well so it's very easy to benchmark. And what we saw at 3200 MHz was 141 average FPS. Tight timings we got on 2666 MHz 135 FPS. Loose timings 133 and of course 2133 yet again fell below at 122 average FPS. So it was 15% behind 3200 megahertz as opposed to 2666, which was only four and 6% behind respectively. However, another thing to point out too was the minimums were much better at 3200 megahertz than all the other settings. And of course, this is a benchmark that does have the most variance out of any benchmark 
I've ever done in the past. Of course, it's a multiplayer benchmark, but also I've found in PUBG, spikes are generally dependent on the server. So really in this case, I would kind of have to ignore the minimum FPS as the game isn't that well optimized, as well as it does depend on the server performance. So what can we take out of these benchmarks? Well, 3200 MHz does indeed perform the best across the board in every single game I tested. Also, the tight timings versus the loose timings, there wasn't that much of a difference at all. So in fact, we can see that Ryzen does indeed love higher memory speeds as opposed to tight timings, which I know on the Intel platform, the tight timings generally tend to make a bigger difference as opposed to the actual memory speeds themselves. So basically, if you're on Ryzen, you will want the highest memory speeds possible. However, this now brings us to another dilemma, and that of course is DDR4 memory pricing. Generally, when you buy memory, the faster the memory is, the more it costs. And as of making this video, I have never seen DDR4 prices as high as they are in the history of doing tech. So this further complicates things as whether you should buy the higher speed memory or the cheaper, less expensive memory and just pocket that money. And honestly, after looking at the memory prices at the current state, I would say it's not that much of a premium if you're getting a 16 gigabyte kit, especially if you're going with a Ryzen 5 or a Ryzen 7. The crucial ballistics, uh, I managed to find a 3200 megahertz kit for around about $145, which isn't too bad at that price, considering the cheapest DDR4 memory 16 gigabyte kit I could find was $115. So that was only a $30 premium, and of course, the performance gains can be substantial, considering that crucial ballistic stick works out of the box with XMP profiles. With the team memory, you'll generally get that to 2666. At least every single kit of DDR4 memory I've had come through here has managed to work on Ryzen at 2666. Though this trend does seem to continue down to the eight gigabyte kits as well. So the cheapest two by four gigabyte kit I could find was in the $60 range as opposed to the cheapest 3200 megahertz kit I could find that was in the $80 range. So it was a $20 premium for the higher speeds. And of course, would I recommend that as opposed to the cheaper kit? And honestly, at these prices, I probably would. I'd say go for it. A $20 premium isn't that much considering the whole build cost will be over $500 if you're building a new Ryzen system and a GTX 1060 or RX 570 or even a 1050 Ti. So it really is worth it in my opinion if you want to overclock. And also on that note, those 3200 megahertz kits generally tend to work out of the box. So you just lock in that profile, restart your computer and you're good to go. As opposed to a cheaper 2400 megahertz kit, which will generally need a bit of clocking and it may even cause you some headaches in the process. Though with that said, if DDR4 prices somehow miraculously come down and the cheapest DDR4 memory versus the overclocked memory does make a bigger price gap, then you have to raise that question of, is it worth it? And really it comes down to the performance figures you've seen here today. Honestly, at 2666 megahertz, the experience is really smooth, even on a Ryzen 3 1200. So really, if you get your memory up to 2666 megahertz, which I've got an overclocking tutorial, which I'll put up here somewhere for you guys, it's really easy to do, and the performance gains are quite substantial over 2133 megahertz. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, then be sure to hit that like button. And also in the realm of DDR4 memory, there is the Samsung BDI memory, which is meant to be the best in terms of overclocking and also in general working with Ryzen correctly and getting those higher speeds. However, of course, as with anything in this world, you get what you pay for. So generally, the more expensive the memory, the better it's gonna be. Anyway guys, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye.